Are you ready for NASA's nuclear surprise? The renowned space agency has just revealed its plans to test a nuclear-powered rocket engine that could take humans to Mars in less than two months. But why is NASA suddenly interested in nuclear technology for its future rockets? Hold on tight as we explore NASA's astonishing nuclear-powered quest in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The idea of nuclear thermal propulsion is almost as old as the space age itself. In the early 1960s, NASA joined forces with the Atomic Energy Commission to explore the design of an NTP engine. The pioneering NERVA culminated in a series of ground tests with a prototype nuclear engine and inspired Werner von Braun, the director of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center and the father of modern rocketry, to propose launching astronauts to Mars on a nuclear thermal rocket by the 1980s. The dust had barely settled from Neil and Buzz's giant leap but Von Braun already recognized the immense potential of nuclear thermal propulsion. But despite NASA's early enthusiasm for nuclear thermal propulsion, its NERVA engine never reached space. The program was plagued when President Richard Nixon made the political decision to cut funding for human missions to Mars and instead focus spending on the space shuttle and research in low Earth orbit. Today, NASA's pursuit of a nuclear thermal rocket engine can be seen as a realization of Von Braun's pioneering vision. Although the time frame has extended, the core idea of using nuclear energy to propel spacecraft and explore the solar system remains intact. And on top of that, nuclear energy also attracted formidable opponents of the United States, especially China and Russia. What is more concerning is that China and Russia have plans for cooperation in both nuclear energy and space exploration. Considering China's achievements in the race for space exploration, it's not hard to argue that they could also combine rocket engines with nuclear energy to expedite their space conquest. This further provides a strong impetus for the United States to push forward with the nuclear rocket engine program. NASA and DARPA, or Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, planned to work together to test a nuclear-powered rocket engine in space as early as 2027 using a project called DRACO. With the help of this new technology, astronauts could journey to and from deep space fast faster than ever, a major capability to prepare for crewed missions to Mars, Bill Nelson, NASA Administrator, said in a statement. The ability to accomplish leap-ahead advances in space technology through the Draco Nuclear Thermal Rocket Program will be essential for more efficiently and quickly transporting material to the Moon and eventually people to Mars. Dr. Stephanie Tompkins, Director of DARPA. The U.S. Space Force has also indicated support for the Draco mission, offering to provide the launch for a demonstration flight. During during that flight, DARPA will conduct experiments with the reactor at various power levels and send that information back to scientists on the ground. That information will help us to better prepare for the next class of crew-ready spacecraft headed for deep space. Additionally, the CEO of SpaceX, a leading global space company, have you heard of it? Elon Musk also shared his views that nuclear thermal rockets would be a great area of research for NASA. He has shown considerable interest as his company plans to develop strategies for establishing an interplanetary civilization that may require such significant sources of energy. So why are senior U.S. officials Russia and China pursuing nuclear might have something to do with the great advantages it brings. The primary advantage of a nuclear thermal rocket engine is its remarkable efficiency. Compared to chemical rocket engines used in the vacuum of space, nuclear thermal propulsion can provide three to five times greater efficiency. The nuclear fission process generates substantial energy, surpassing the chemical energy produced by exploding propellants in traditional rocket engines. This increased energy output translates into greater thrust and propulsion. With faster propulsion and increased thrust, spacecraft powered by nuclear thermal propulsion can reach their destinations more rapidly. Not only does this technology reduce transit times, but it also minimizes the risks associated with extended space travel, such as radiation exposure and the physical and psychological challenges faced by astronauts. Let's imagine for a moment that a one-way trip to Mars takes a minimum of six months. That's a considerable amount of time for an astronaut to spend in a spacecraft roughly the size of a one-bedroom apartment. This is truly a daunting psychological challenge as we have to be confined to a small and completely isolated space, not to mention the risks involved in prolonged exposure to radiation. However, with the advent of NASA's nuclear rocket engine, 
that journey could be significantly reduced to just 45 days, a remarkably impressive reduction in time. And more thrust and control than a conventional chemical rocket means you can zip around the solar system like a pro. Whether you need to tweak your trajectory, orbit a planet, or dock with a space station, this engine has got you covered. It's like having a GPS and a cruise control in one handy package. But wait, there's more. Not only is this engine super maneuverable, it's also super efficient. It can carry more stuff than a regular rocket because it doesn't need to lug around oxygen to burn its fuel. As Mike Kynard, a former NASA bigwig, put it, you're not burning anything so you don't have to carry oxygen, which is really heavy. That means you can pack more goodies for your space adventure, like scientific instruments, supplies, equipment, or even a jacuzzi. The sky's the limit. With a nuclear thermal rocket engine, you can explore more, do more, and see more. It's the ultimate tool for space exploration and colonization. Whether you want to visit Mars, build a space station, or go beyond the solar system, this engine will take you there. Don't settle for less, go nuclear. But in order to make it a promising propulsion system for space exploration, nuclear rocket engines operate based on a complex set of technical details. At the heart of a nuclear thermal rocket engine is the utilization of nuclear fission, specifically the splitting of uranium atoms. The nuclear reactor within the engine initiates a chain reaction by bombarding uranium atoms with free electrons, causing the nucleus to split up into smaller nuclei. This process releases an enormous amount of energy, creating a continuous chain reaction that generates significant heat. The intense heat produced by nuclear fission, reaching temperatures of approximately 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, or 2,760 degrees Celsius, serves as the primary source of propulsion for the rocket engine. The heat is channeled to convert liquid hydrogen into a high-pressure gas, which is then expelled through a nozzle, creating thrust and propelling the spacecraft forward. Liquid hydrogen is the chosen propellant for nuclear thermal rocket engines due to its favorable properties. Hydrogen, being the lightest element in the known universe, offers exceptional efficiency and performance in space travel. When liquid hydrogen is pumped through the reactor core at high speed, the extreme heat causes rapid boiling and expansion, transforming it into a gas. The expansion of the gaseous hydrogen creates a powerful jet of steam-like exhaust, driving the spacecraft forward and providing the necessary thrust for propulsion. The use of liquid hydrogen as a propellant ensures a lightweight and efficient fuel source, maximizing the overall performance and range of the rocket engine. But of course, safety is of paramount importance in the design and operation of nuclear thermal rocket engines. Imagine I worked for NASA, or maybe I'm just an NTP salesman. This is exactly how the pitch would go. Don't worry, we've got the reactor and the nukes under control. We've wrapped them in layers of stuff that keep the radiation and heat from getting out and frying us or the spaceship. And before you freak out about nukes in space, let me tell you that we only turn them on when we're far away from Earth. That way, if something goes wrong, we don't mess up our home planet. But what if things go wrong on the ground, you ask? Well, we've thought of that too. The reactor and its parts are tough enough to survive almost anything, even a big boom. So relax and and enjoy the ride. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing expansion into the realm of nuclear propulsion. And if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking our Patreon link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. And as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.